Hello, we are starting our broadcast. Today is a nice day, sunny. Um, we have uh, we are in the Milky Way galaxy, solar system, third planet from the sun. Today is the year 2014, September 28th. Um, welcome everybody. We have our guest Ray Fernandez. Ray, Her Ray Fernandez. Fernandez. <laughs> welcome, Ray. Thank you very much. And let me introduce all our crowd. Uh, Sephira, which says Hello. Ross on the screen. Hey, Sephira. Sephira Hi, is Ray. Hi. Uh, Justin. Uh, hey, Hayan. Hi, Justin. Uh, Gabriel. Hi, Hayan. Hello. It's uh, Justin Ibarra, Mr. Ray. Hi, Justin. Um, really, really love your energy. Your energy is very pleasant um, thank you for sharing it with us and, and myself in this moment thank you Justin we hope I hope to learn a lot from uh, uh, everyone here on on this group meeting thank you so I will start with a disclaimer that would be my traditional beginning uh, so what you see here is artistic performance we show our best and we really intended well but it is your choice how you take it our viewers uh, you know, take it smartly, take it with discretion. Uh, we talk about very, very mind-blowing things. That's where we are. We're explorers. We go out there on the borderline and we explore unknown. And we tell you about what we find. And it can blow your mind. It does blow your mind. Uh, we wish you to take it easy. Take it easy. And we wish you to take it with smart choices. Make smart choices because of that. Just because you learn about aliens doesn't mean that you have to become less successful in your daily life. Keep socializing with your friends. Don't abandon your friends. Keep keep your job or if you don't have a job, get your job and be successful in this material life because aliens will appear at some day but um, I don't know when and we want to know as much as you do. So that's the goal. The goal is to bring you knowledge, which is mind-blowing, but take it easy, take it with discretion, make smart choices, and be successful. That's my introduction. Um, I welcome Ray, and um, <clears throat> uh, keep in mind we have we have audience which is very diverse. It is an open forum. Anybody can come here, can ask any questions. So it's 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 like a beach. Anybody can come to a beach and uh, it's a wonderful thing we have open forum and it, it will be there forever it is broadcasted recorded it will be there forever so it's a very unusual group of people some of us are well connected mainstream people who who know about aliens and but most of us are misfits are uh, people who are not fit well in society lonely people who are only thinking about the aliens and gods and spirits and things of that sort and not very well integrated in the society so so these are very different groups of people and some of us are other way around we are all in an alternative culture and we're well connected in well connected in alternative culture so it's a very strange group of people so you know keep that in mind and introduce your experiences I heard about them I spoke to you recently and we had a nice conversation now I invite you to share that with with the world okay excellent thank you for uh, for that introduction I am um, very familiar with the different mindsets of individuals that might be partaking in this discussion um, let me start from the very beginning and then I'll tell you a little bit about an organization that I uh, am associated with and the name of the group is called the Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial Encounters, FREE, F-R-E-E. -E. Um, and our website is experiencer, E-X-P-E-R-I-E-N-C-E-R, -E 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 dot C-O. Um, now let me give you a little bit of background about myself. I'm not going to go into many of the details. Uh, because there are just numerous, numerous uh, events. Um, <clears throat> first of all, um, prior to March of 2012, I was um, 
a your typical over educated uh, agnostic uh, individual that just uh, functioned on uh, pure rationality and that um, I hope that there was a God but uh, I wasn't very spiritual um, then uh, my background I um, have attended uh, I have various uh, advanced degrees. I went to Rutgers College. Uh, after that, I uh, got a master's degree from Cornell University. Uh, after that, I went to University of California at Berkeley for a PhD uh, in uh, city and regional planning. And then years later, I went and I got a law degree. And I'm currently uh, an attorney with the U.S. federal government. Uh, with the IRS and I deal with uh, estate taxes. That's the taxes that the multi-millionaires, the heirs, have to pay uh, to the federal government uh, but it only applies to very very wealthy individuals. So my current job is very very boring, <laughs> not very stimulating. So that's just a little bit about my background. And it then is, It is very erroneous that you are sort of a very advanced in alternative things and then you Take, take part in a sort of repressive part of their system, very repressive, or maybe not, I don't know. Is it? Do you, do you feel kind of drawn in, in, into different directions by your job well, and your alternative science? Alternative science? It, well, it, it was a very uh, jarring experience about what happened to me because there was a total transformation that took place. Um, let me explain uh, what this transformation was, at least the beginning of it. As I said, there are hundreds of these types of stories. I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. Um, this was on a, a, a Saturday e evening. We had a, 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 a almost 17-year-old uh, dog, a Jack Russell Terrier, that was like our daughter. Um, we treated her like a member of the family. And then uh, she had a stroke which left her paralyzed from the neck down mm -hmm. um, and she didn't appear to be in much distress so um, you know, we immediately were not going to go to the hospital to put her to sleep you know but we knew that that you know she had a stroke she couldn't move from the neck down she was almost 17 years old so uh, we, we my wife and I discussed uh, bringing her on Monday morning to our vet and having um, a ceremony for her and, and say goodbye the next day, uh, Sunday morning at about 6 o'clock, the dog was still able to bark. Uh, my wife then picked her up to see if she could move and uh, moved her a little bit, but she was still totally paralyzed from the neck down. Then my wife carried her down the stairs. Uh, we live in a two-story house. And when she got to the bottom of the living room, my wife saw an object that I'll try to describe it for you. The object was approximately... Um, two feet wide at the bottom, uh, three feet in height, and it looked like an upside down U, the letter U. It was uh, metallic uh, 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 in shape, uh, and it had two green lights in the center of it. And then my wife, being a good uh, uh, Catholic uh, uh, from Mexico, <laughs> started kneeling down and praying. And basically she said, if you're a bad spirit, you know, get out of here. If you're a good spirit, uh, please stick around and, and help my, my, my nena, my nanny. I, I would say that's a great idea. That's what I would do. I also yeah. sing. When I see things like that, I sing. Sing songs to please that entity. Yeah. So she was, uh, obviously she wasn't talking of this. It was all in her head. And then uh, um, uh, she said, please, uh, uh, she didn't say cure, but she said, don't let my nenita suffer. Nenita means little girl in Spanish. And so what happened, these two green lights shot out and sort of like was scanning her like that and then at that point my wife freaked out <laughs> you know <laughs> when that took place and she started yelling for me to come downstairs this is Sunday at 6 30 in the morning and I was like ignoring her because I thought she saw a, a cockroach or a little mouse or something like that so for the next 10 minutes she was yelling and screaming for me to come downstairs and I was like you know please I want to sleep so then finally she went upstairs and she dragged me downstairs she didn't tell me what it was and uh, once I got downstairs, I saw something totally different than what she had seen. Uh, uh, what I saw was a floating plasma energy being. And I say being because it controlled my mind and it performed a miraculous healing. 
Now, in terms of myself, uh, I looked at this thing, I stared at it, and I had tunnel vision. I could not see to the right, could not see to the left. It was straight at this object. It was approximately um, two to three feet in width, one foot and a half to two feet in height, and it was just floating energy, multicolored, not uh, like a rainbow where you see the same colors, you know? No, it was all colors all mixed in, semi-translucent, transparent. And then uh, I did something that uh, now I know why I acted that way, but when I acted that way, I had no understanding. What I did is I looked at it, I glanced at it, and I went, ah, bullshit. And I <laughs> turned around, I walked up the stairs, put my hands in my chest, and I looked straight up at the ceiling with my eyes open for like for 15 minutes. So for 15 minutes, I was glancing at the ceiling, and I wasn't thinking. There was no conscious thoughts going into my brain. It was like I was hypnotized. Then 15 minutes later, I felt like the hypnotist said, okay, kid, wake up. And all of a sudden, I like, oh, my God, what the, you know, <laughs> just happened. And I ran down the stairs, and my wife was, like, dancing all over the floor, and the dog was running after her. The dog was jumping up and down, and, and hallelujah, hallelujah, the angels cured her, the angels cured her. And she was running around and picking up the, the, our dog and kissing her, kissing her, putting her on the floor, and she was running around, hallelujah, the angels cured her. And I was like, what the, you know, what just happened, you know? And I asked my wife, I said, uh, Dulce, what the hell just happened, you know? And she said, you were there, you saw it, the angels cured her, the angels cured her. And, and she wouldn't give me details, you know? Um, I don't think she even remembers uh, what happened during that 15-minute time period because she was never able, able to tell me. I asked her many, many times. She was never able to tell me. All I know is that as of that day, my whole worldview just came crashing down, you know? Um, I tried to ask my, uh, my wife more questions, more questions. She wouldn't give me any answers. Uh, I, I think she doesn't remember. She was either not there or she was unconscious or something. You know, something happened. But all I know is that our dog was cured, totally uh, cured. Let, let me interrupt you. It's a great experience. Uh, let's take a breath and just reflect on it. It's, it makes a great show when we have a reflection on a miracle. It's sort of easy breath. just the first one of hundreds yeah. of these types I understand. of experiences. We have one and a half hour, yeah. we can't tell everything in that, but let's reflect on it somehow. Okay. I mean, the, the, you witnessed the miracle. Mm. Do you know if, what, do, did it, what, were you told later what it, what, what it was? Did, did no. you get uh, some sort of... No, no, the, lots of experiences happened to me later on, and what had happened was at that point, I was just purely confused. Uh, because just, just a second. I mean, uh, yeah. Justin has a question, right? All right, now he muted himself. Justin, you have a question, right? Oh, sorry. He okay. raised his hand, but yeah. I think his hand meant something else. He might be sent healing. Okay. Yeah, uh, we speak. We speak to an angel through a an angel got healed through a channeler. So we we are aware of angelic angelic beings as well. We don't only focus on extraterrestrials. We know angels exist. They are beings which. Oh, I know why, why why Justin cannot speak huh? because I, I he, his sound is to to the zero. I'm sorry. I will I will fix it. All right. So Justin, you can speak now. Yes. Sorry. I just wanted to say thank you so much, brother Ray, because your experience. I had something very similar with my twin flame, my fairy angel, where she came home and she has suffered from the label of bipolarism and schizophrenia. And I was moved to begin doing a Reiki healing on her heart. And I saw a vibration come through our bathroom mirror. And I felt the presence that you were speaking of. And she, I felt it. I didn't need to see it. She needed to see it. And we experienced something like that. And that was the day that we both began our transformations. And that was about two months ago where we felt the presence of angelic like beings, and we have found out that there were angels, but there were more than just angels there as well. And it's such a beautiful experience to hear you share yours, and so confirming. Thank you so much, infinitely. Well, thanks, thank you, Justin. Ray, please continue. Thank you for, okay. for letting us reflect on that. I'll, I'll try to move fairly quickly and skip over a lot of events, but uh, I'll try to go in summary mode. Uh, basically, in terms of myself, um, 
uh, I immediately went what uh, I guess a normal rational person would do is um, I, I went to the internet and all of a sudden, you know, I started, you know, typing in, you know, aliens, ETs, you know, <laughs> uh, just so I could educate myself because I've never been exposed to any of this uh, material. And all it did was just confuse me even more because the internet is filled with so much uh, junk. Uh, that's a kind word. <laughs> um, and it's just very, very confusing. And I ordered, you know, many, many books on UFOs, and I started reading books on UFOs. I submitted a subscription to this group called MUFON, um, and, um, uh, uh, you know, I was just trying to find out what the hell happened, you know. Uh, I thought about going to our local priest, but, you know, I, I am not a religious person to begin with, and I don't think the priest could give me a solution to that, at least a solution, uh, uh, some answers that I wanted to hear. So what had happened was my wife, in the meantime, was uh, seeing these huge crafts at night. Uh, she would wake up. One time she woke up at 3.30 in the morning. Actually, it was our dog that woke her up. And instead of, go, instead of going through the back door, she wanted to go through the front. And we live in a very quiet neighborhood of Miami in a cul-de-sac that there's no through traffic even in the, the closest street next to us. So it's terribly quiet. No, no movement whatsoever. So 3:30 in the morning, she saw a um, a huge uh, UFO, uh, very very close, like two blocks away, but it was the size of like a football uh, uh, field or larger, and it had colors. She described it like uh, stained glass windows of of, of our church. <laughs> she says, "Oh, I saw a beautiful craft." of the angels. They came by and visit me <laughs> last night. So she, she would have these frequent sightings. And then one time when she went to Mexico with her family, uh, various of her family members seen a huge craft as well. Um, and Mexico is very open. It's not like here in the U.S., uh, these discussions. Yeah, we know about that. Yes. Yeah. Best movies, uh, best UFO sightings come from Mexico yeah. and uh, it, well, uh, YouTube is full of those. It's wonderful that the culture. I guess it is the culture. Uh, it fits what I guess the the ancient culture of Mexico kind of already has a story. So whatever new comes, it fits with fits the old old uh, stories. Correct. Correct. Um, so let me skip over a lot of different events and uh, uh, let me just Ray, Justin, pardon. Justin raises his hand. Uh, I, I, yeah. Justin, be, be brief, but go ahead. Yes, there's a message coming through. Just brief, simply. Brother Ray, we are being contacted by similar entities. If you would like to explore this idea, I will. Con we can set up a contact. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Justin. Yes. I will follow up with you. Um, let me uh, pursue, jump a couple of months later. Six months later after I had this event, this is in August of... Um, of 2012. At that point, I was still in a state of, of confusion. I had been going to the internet uh, every day for like for four or five hours, just finding out, you know, what's going on. I was in a state of pure confusion. Um, and then what happened was that um, uh, this friend of mine was coming by to give me some documents. He said he was very close by. And I said, okay, I'll wait for you outside. This is at nine o'clock at night. Uh, the night was purely cloud, all cloudy. You couldn't see one star in the sky, okay? Um, and so I'm waiting for him, and then as I'm waiting for him, I'm looking right at the direction where my wife pointed out that huge UFO. And I said, oh, my God, this thing must have been really huge because it went from one uh, gigantic tree all the way to the other side of this gigantic tree, and I was thinking about that. And then a thought stimulated me, and that was a video that I saw the night before of this man who calls down these crafts and he had called it he had videotaped the event it was during the daylight and what appeared was a little tiny dot in the sky like moving around and you know and he and I was seeing the video of this and so I said ah the hell with it let me try to experiment and so I tried to call down this craft oh I want to see the beautiful craft that my wife saw the angelic craft that had uh, the beautiful colors just like the stained glass windows of our church you made your presence felt to her I want to be able to see you and, and nothing I turn around I did that for 15 minutes okay after 50 minutes I said I'm freaking going crazy I really lost it this time calling down a, a UFO I'm really nuts all of a sudden on top of my next door neighbor's house five feet from the roof was a football, not football field, it was almost like a football stadium, half of a football stadium size craft 
50 feet away from me. I could have gotten a rock and hit it. It was five feet from the roof of my neighbor's house, and it went back like at least two blocks. And I could tell because we have these huge trees two blocks away, and that craft still went further. Let me describe that craft. It was uh, semi-translucent, so you could see the clouds on, on, through it. It was made up of thousands and thousands of oblong, which are a circular type of light streaks. And there was thousands of them that formed the whole periphery, the whole shell of the craft. And inside, there was like energy fluctuations inside this craft. So it wasn't fully materialized. Okay. And then immediately what got popped into my head was my daughter's voice. And I heard it very clearly. Daddy, you and Mommy have seen a UFO. Next time you see a UFO, call me because I want to see it. Okay. Now, without thinking, you wouldn't want to get a 10-year-old involved into something like this because it might scare her. It might be traumatic for her. But I wasn't thinking. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain in more details later on. Um, I immediately then moved like 10 feet to my right and because my house is right there in the cul-de-sac and I started yelling for my daughter. And I called her name, I called her name. And she opens the window, she says, what is it, Daddy? And I said, there's a UFO out here, there's a UFO, come out, come out. So she runs outside, now we got two people watching this uh, show, it was like uh, the light show. It was like a 4th of July, we were being entertained. And then um, she asked me, Daddy, what is it? And I said, it's a UFO, but it's in hiding, it doesn't want to show it all of itself. And we weren't scared, we were just, you know, watching a show, a performance. And then all of a sudden, my friend comes with his wife and their 17-year-old daughter. My friend is uh, from Mexico, college educated, uh, very, very Catholic uh, religious orientation uh, together with his wife. She's from uh, Colombia. And uh, all of a sudden now you have five people watching this huge, gigantic craft. Uh, as I said, it was five feet. Uh, the bottom part of the craft was five feet from the roof. And I could have gotten a little rock and, and hit it. That's how close it was. So then my two friends then started coming up with excuses of what it might be. Lightning, atmospheric conditions, the headlights, one of these circus lights that are moving around. <laughs> and so after like 10 minutes of doing this, and I started thinking, hey, you know, they don't believe you. You know, like I was, you know, communicating to these entities in that shift, in that craft. They don't believe you. Then all of a sudden, the lights totally changed from these thousands and thousands of light streaks, oblong light streaks, they were replaced by stars that were like 10 times the size of Venus that were blinking on and off in a fraction of a second, like three or four times in a fraction of a second, on and off, on and off, on and off. And it was throughout the whole craft. Then there was no doubt what this thing was, okay? Uh, I know it purposely changed the, its appearance because my friends were not believing it. After that, no doubt. <laughs> um, after about 10 minutes, my friend said, oh, we got to go. We got things to do. And in my head, I did not rationalize that my friends were leaving. Okay, yeah, bye. Take care. Don't worry about that paper. You know, we'll talk about it. And then in terms of myself, um, uh, I stayed for another 10 minutes with my daughter. And then all of a sudden, I felt like I was being attacked by mosquitoes. I started slapping my legs. And so while this show was still going on, this light show of these stars, I grabbed my daughter. I said, come on, Scott, let's get out of here. These mosquitoes are killing me. So we went inside the house. Uh, about five minutes after we got inside the house, all of a sudden my daughter goes, Daddy, there were no mosquitoes outside. And all of a sudden, just like when I was in the bed, that the hypnotist said, wake up, kid. All of a sudden I woke up to the reality of what actually took place. I grabbed my camera, my video camera, I ran outside. Nothing was gone. And it was then that I realized that these entities in this craft were able to partially uh, manipulate part of your consciousness. Because I was speaking like we are speaking right now and communicating back and forth, back and forth, having a rational discussion. But when it came to crossing that bridge of, of, of um, understanding what was taking place, you didn't, weren't able to cross that bridge, okay? So, for example, the 17-year-old, we know all teenagers have their little uh, uh, cell phones that they're always texting to each other. I think we all had our cell phones. No one took a cell phone to take a picture. It didn't even come across to us, okay? But yet when my daughter said that and I 
woke up immediately I said holy you know what let me get a camera to take a picture so I could prove this thing right when I got out there nothing but the interesting part was not that event in and of itself the interesting part was what happened afterwards okay I told you that before then all I did was just go to the computer four or five hours a day try to read about you know UFO ETs channeling you name it all of this stuff um, after that I totally stopped going to the internet I stopped reading books on UFOs all I would do was uh, for the next four months 12 hours a day was just read hundreds and hundreds of books on near-death experiences and consciousness studies not the metaphysical consciousness studies but uh, the science oriented consciousness studies the one that was uh, based upon scientific studies of telepathy out-of-body experiences remote viewing uh, mystical travel um, uh, as I said uh, telepathy psychokinesis um, and and the physics of consciousness studies which is a uh, 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 um, uh, most advanced physicists know that uh, consciousness studies is a derivative of quantum physics so I started reading that don't ask me why I got into you know all of those you know this area but I would order 10 books from Amazon in a week I would have eight of them read and then I would order 10 more from Amazon then when there were only two left I would order 10 more I did this for four months straight okay then uh, what had happened was uh, in December of 2012 late December of 2012 I had never spoken to anybody about near-death experiences no one except my wife and my wife uh, she thought I was going nuts but she n knew uh, she was understanding of it because she herself was a, an experiencer okay and um, so the very first person I ever asked was my daughter's pediatrician who I'd never met before and remember I told you how uh, part of your brain is controlled the other part is not controlled uh, when I went to the doctor's office all of a sudden coming out of my mouth was this conversation and again I've never seen this doctor before because my wife always brought her to the pediatrician not myself so it was excuse me doctor have you ever heard of near-death experiences I've just finished reading approximately 300 books on this topic area and out of those 300 books 75 were by physicians just like yourself and out of those 75 books I would estimate at least 20 were written by professors in medical schools so, so you came to your doctor and started to talk right like uh, just like that uh, about the extra just about, out of, uh, and now yeah and now in my and this is a woman I've never met before and then in my head I was like why in the hell are you saying this you know well, shut up why are you saying this you know and then her eyeballs pop out and I said oh my god you offended the hell out of this woman you, she thinks you're crazy now you know and so um, I, I said excuse me doctor I apologize I didn't mean to offend you he goes no you didn't offend me how do you know I had a near-death experience mm -hmm. and then she goes on and tells me when she was 10 years old uh, she was brought to the hospital clinically dead um, how she floated out of her body when she was 10 years old in the emergency room um, and and from the ceiling of the emergency room she was able to see the doctor describe the doctor oh he's a like a basketball player six foot three six foot five very tall slender with blonde hair short blonde hair the nurse was very short like five feet 200 pounds with a very short haircut the 1950s glasses and then she talked to me about how she went through two walls and then was above her parents and for 15 minutes this doctor stopped her practice and my daughter was next to me the whole time <laughs> and she told me verbatim word for word what her mother and father were saying and then she even described this lady in a red shirt that had a little boy that was throwing a ball at her parents and were you know bothering them you know and then the parents was like you know how did you all know all of this <laughs> you know first of all you were like we're in the waiting room and secondly you were dead you know and then she, she then uh, describes what the doctor and the nurse looked like and then 15 minutes later walking into the room to see what she uh, how she was doing was the doc doctor and the nurse exactly how she described it now that was a Friday Friday afternoon the next day uh, Saturday night we had a church dinner for married couples okay and at the church dinner uh, we sat there was like a hundred uh, couples uh, these very large tables that sit like uh, eight people and I sat next to this man I never met before I knew the, the, the lady 
Um, and um, and so again, out of my mouth, I started saying this thing. You know, excuse me, sir. Have you ever heard about near death experiences? You know, and in my head, I was like, why in the hell am I saying this? Why, why am I telling this guy this information? I don't even know this guy. You know. Then all of a sudden, his eyeballs pop out, <laughs> and then he tells me about a near-death experience of his mother who died like a year before. And then, uh, I'm not going to go into the details, but basically, she described the ambulance worker. She said it was a big, fat, black man, six foot three, like 300 pounds. Uh, he was followed by the short, white woman with a ponytail, um, and those were the uh, paramedics. Then she described uh, being sucked up like a vacuum cleaner, going flying through the tunnel, uh, going into the light, the universe of pure light, and there she met her uh, previously deceased husband. Um, she had a conversation with an entity she described as God. Uh, so that was a Saturday night. The next day, uh, I visited my father. My father, uh, two years ago, was 83 years old, bedridden, very, very sick. He still is very, very sick. And uh, I've only remembered him going to church like twice. And so I said, this is a great opportunity to tell my, my, uh, my atheist father, you know, about what happened on, on Friday and Saturday. So then I called my father, I called my mother, and I said, look, I need to talk to you. And so uh, we managed to get my father up in mobile, walking, you know, very gingerly with his uh, walker. We went outside into the terrace, and, and so I started telling them the story. Then my father goes, ah, that happened to me. And I go, say, What? And then he starts telling me his story uh, 15 years earlier when he had open uh, heart bypass surgery. Um, uh, if, am I still uh, being heard, uh, everyone? Okay. Yes. yes. Thank, you. Thank you very much. If you Thank can you. move your camera a little down because your face moved down. So move your camera so you oh, the okay. browse now the touch the top. Even more down, more down. Camera, me, more down. I'm camera ahead down. I apologize for that. Yeah, just camera uh, down. So, uh, yes. Yeah, perfect. So my, Thank you. My, my father was telling me uh, uh, about uh, his surgery, heart surgery, where he floated out of his body. He saw his body with his chest wide open, that uh, doctors were working on his heart. Um, he, uh, that he described the scenery as many, many doctors, many, many nurses. He then described it similar to this other lady the day before, like he got sucked up by a vacuum cleaner, went to the tunnel, went to the light. Uh, he was flying real, real fast, and all of a sudden, he got into this universe of pure light. Waiting for him was his mother and father and his uh, brother, previously deceased. Then they had an angelic embrace, because they weren't material, they were spiritual, they were spirit. And uh, he knew it was them, uh, even though he couldn't physically see them. Um, they then presented him to what he described as God. God gave him what, what in the literature it is, is described as a life review. Uh, what my father stated was that uh, he was up there at least 20 years. He said time does not exist up there. Um, and uh, God showed him all the good things that he had done and all the bad things. And he showed that experience from, um, from not only his mind, from the mind of the other person that he had impacted. So, for example, uh, I think he told me of, of, of a story where he had an, a fight with like another 12-year-old boy, and he was punching the boy, and he was seeing that experience not only from his brain, but also the brain of that little boy at the same exact exact time, you know, the consciousness of, of, of that young boy. And so he said it was at least 20 years because they went through all the good things and all the bad things that he's done. He said that, um, uh, that God was not judgmental. It was just to teach him. And then uh, God told him a whole bunch of stuff, and I said, well, do you remember? And he goes, how the hell do I remember? That was 15 years ago. <laughs> and then at that point, I was like blown away because it's three days in a row, you know, this thing happens. And I knew, I knew it wasn't a coincidence at that point. At that point, I had a, a, an epiphany. It was like, you know, all the bells were ringing, the lights were shining all over. It's like, whoa, you know. Um, and then I turned to my mother, and, my, and I said, Mom, you never told me about this. And she said, we only discussed it once, and that was in the hospital bed when my father woke up. And, and she heard his story and basically told him, look, go back to sleep. You're agitated. You know, you're very, very nervous. Uh, this was, uh, you just woke up out of surgery. It was the medication. And since then, they never spoke about it until that night that I mentioned it to my, to my parents. And then my mother told me the story um, of this very famous uh, Cuban singer, this elderly man, who's very well known down here in Miami, uh, Roberto Torres, and how he was on a TV show 
uh, that he talked about his near-death experience, and it was exactly what my father had. And so she knows that it was for real. Um, and, and she mentioned a couple of other people that she knew that had told her throughout the years about similar uh, stories. So then driving home that night, I was looking at the sky. I looked up at the stars, and I said to both God and the ETs that were communicating with me, I said, congratulations. In a four-month period, you have managed to get an individual that was a total material rationalist atheist and totally convert him into someone that has uh, not a faith, but I know. I know God. <laughs> I know that we are spirit. I know that there is life after death, and I, I know that more than any Catholic priest in Miami. And since that day, it's like I just have had an explosion of experiences, um, which maybe I might touch on maybe one or two more, but um, uh, it's just an explosion of experiences. But I'd rather take the opportunity maybe at this point to answer some questions about that, what happened afterwards, and then talk a little bit about Free, the organization. Uh, because uh, the, uh, the organization is much, much more important. Uh, yeah, let, let's wait. Uh, let's just make a breath and just reflect on what you said. Uh, let's invite questions from the audience. Hey, guys, uh, unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah, have you been contacted by a lot of people speaking galactic languages? Because all of us here speak galactic languages together. No, no. Well, uh, in terms of contact, what I have had... Um, one time, I was given a message that popped inside my head, and um, and I saw a video associated with it, like right in front of me, uh, a video. I could go into detail of that experience, because that's how this organization got started. And then uh, what has happened since then is that, um, how, how would I describe it? I've definitely been contacted <laughs> many, many different ways. One time... Uh, uh, let me give you most of the time what has happened. What has happened most of the time is that people get brought to me, right? I don't contact them. They're brought to me, and it's for a specific purpose. And that's how the organization got started. Uh, I have a who's who in the, um, the people that I've had worked in the ET contact field. Uh, uh, I can name some names, and everybody recognizes these people, like, like Whitley Strieber, um, uh, uh, Edgar Mitchell, um, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, Mary Rodwell, Barbara Lamb. Um, these are all people that I've been working with experiences for 30, 40 years. Uh, they came to me, <laughs> you know, uh, and I can tell you some of those stories of how that took place. So that's how I'm being contacted. I'm being uh, steered. I'm being directed. Um, uh, one specific time, there was uh, a channeling that took place. Uh, maybe, uh, Max, could I, uh, maybe for two or three minutes, talk about that experience? Of course. Okay. What had happened was we already had established this organization, and um, we have 20 members on the advisory board, and as I mentioned before, these are people who are like a who's who uh, in this arena. Um, on, on, on the Skype call, we had uh, Dr. John Klimo, who is, the, in my opinion, the world's leading academic on the paranormal. Uh, he's been a professor of psychology for 40 years. Uh, he has chaired 250 PhD dissertations. Out of those, 75 have been on the paranormal topic. Um, I was guided to him. <laughs> I didn't know he was an experiencer. Out of the blue, I, I, I contacted him by email. And I said, look, I need to talk to you. We had a telephone conversation. Within five minutes, he told me he's an experiencer since he was a young kid, a young boy. Um, and then uh, I told him I had a mission for him, and he accepted it. <laughs> I was given that mission, and he knew what that mission was. <laughs> but anyway, he was on that phone call. He wrote a book on channeling, an academic book on channeling, which is the most famous book on channeling. It's, it's been translated to 18 languages. And the title of the book is Channeling. <laughs> and uh, his last name is Klimo, K-L-I-M-O. His first name is John, J-O-N. So he was on the phone call, and he's like the world's leading expert on channeling. Then we had uh, Mary Rodwell, who uh, is internationally well-known, uh, very, very famous in Europe and, and in England, not so much in the United States, but she is very well-known in the U.S. Uh, she's been working with experiencers for approximately 30 years. 
uh, she has regressed uh, approximately 2,500 experiencers. And, and, and now she's focusing on children, on star children, even though she works with numerous other individuals. Um, then we had this other lady, uh, uh, Marilyn Hughes, who uh, founded this organization called the Out of Body Travel Foundation. And, um, and we had uh, one other uh, individual, Christina Knowles, who's also one of our co-founders. The co-founders are free are Christina Knowles, uh, a lifetime experiencer, and Mary Rodwell. And so what happened was, um, and there, there was this other gentleman who's a, um, a research geneticist out of Australia who lives next to Mary. So he was sitting next to Mary. What had happened was that uh, one lady, uh, uh, all of a sudden, she said, Ray, I'm getting uh, slammed. And that means that she's getting a download. Okay, And at the same time, Mary Rodwell was going like this. And I was seeing both of them. And I was the only one that had a camera that was able to, to see them. At the same time, they were doing this. Okay, One was like this, and the other one was like that. Then they started channeling an entity. Three ladies. And they were finishing each other's sentences. And then uh, it was a message for me. <laughs> okay, I cannot reveal uh, the uh, the nature of, of that message um, uh, in a live uh, broadcast. Um, and it dealt with another experiencer that we're working with, and it deals. Uh, I won't go into the topic, um, but um, and they were finishing each other's sentences, and it dealt with past lives. It deal dealt with a past life mission and a current life mission. And it dealt with not uh, confusing what happened in your past life with this current life. So uh, what, what took place in the past life doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen again, reduplicate again. Okay? So that was the message. And to tell this individual that it was not this person's fault of what had happened in the past life. So don't prejudge that to this life. And it was, the message was given to me so I can relate to this other person because I'm the, the vehicle that communicates it to this person. Um, so that, it's these types of, of communications that are taking place. Um, there are many members in our group that have had interactions with different types of beings, um, uh, that have had uh, conversations, information, visuals, uh, you name it. Um, the, the people in our group uh, have been interacting. Most of them have been lifetime experiencers. Um, but I, I hope that answers uh, that your question, Justin. <laughs> sort of like a roundabout uh, about, uh, attempt to answer that question. Um, Ray? Yes, sir. We definitely need to talk. Um, something's communicating through your blinks as you talk. I've noticed something with your eyes. And as I allowed myself to be open to this idea, I started getting telepathic communications from you and communicating with you. In, in these now moments. Um, we have, like, we really should, we really need to talk. We just flat out, just simply, we need to start communicating as soon as possible. Okay. Um, and the nice closer we can you. get to each other, the better. Okay, most definitely. Max can send you my email. Um, maybe this would be a, uh, uh, does anyone have any questions about, um, that spiritual transformation that occurred with me with those near-death experiences. Hi, um, yes, yeah. uh, Sophia, please go ahead. Hi. Yes, I was wondering why you chose specifically near-death experience after you had that vision of the not the experience with the UFO and your friends, and then you started studying really intensely, and it seemed to focus on near-death experience. I was curious how that happened. I did not choose it. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't tell me why I did that. I just went into Amazon, um, and and I don't recall the specifics, but maybe uh, I came across a book on near-death experiences or a video. Uh, um, um, I, I think maybe it was like a video of someone, and all of a sudden I said, I'm going to order that book. And when I went to order that book, you know, like in Amazon they have like similar books. All of a sudden I ordered yes, like 10 yes. books about near-death experiences. And then it okay. came within, you know, first one within a couple of, you know, four or five days, then I started reading it, and then the other started trickling in, and then I was just consumed by it. Uh, so it wasn't a conscious thought. It wasn't like, all of a sudden I'm going to read, you know, near-death experiences. No, mm -hmm. no. Um, it was totally, I don't even remember how I got into that, you know. 
Um, and have, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And ha have you been able to correlate your ex your understanding of near-death experience and people's yeah. sort of spiritual, maybe religious experiences with that? And the well, ETs, do you see a direct correlation yeah, between the two? I, I wish we had like 10 hours to talk because <laughs> it would take me that long to uh, address that because these are profound yeah. issues. Yes. Um, let me jump start a little bit until May of 2013. Uh, May of 2013, um, I was driving on a highway next to the airport in the middle of a traffic jam at 8.30 in the morning. At that point, uh, um, all of a sudden I got a voice in my head. I need to do a project on the relationship between the spirit world ETs and quantum physics. Okay, that's what was in my head. And then it, it, it then it's talked about details. The details were you can't make money off of it. You got to get the right folks. You have to eliminate ego. Okay, um, you know, on and on all these parameters. You know, and then at the same time, uh, I saw a video, and the video was sort of like the Price is Right wheel. You know, that wheel that spins around. Yes. It yes. has all these different spokes coming out of it. Yes. And what it was was that I was in the middle of the, the, uh, the of the spoke turning around, and it was turning all around me, and I was like looking up. And in the middle of these different uh, spokes were different paranormal phenomena, okay, mm -hmm. um, 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 out of body, near death experiences, uh, the spirit world, uh, uh, telepathy, um, uh, you name it, ghosts, uh, ETs, um, uh, every, everything that people can associate it with with paranormal was all spinning around. Uh, uh, and then what was holding everything together was quantum physics. Mm -hmm. That was the vision. Okay, quantum physics was the glue. Okay, mm -hmm. um, that same night. I got an email from Mary Rodwell. I had sent her an email five months before. Okay, uh, I sent it to like about maybe ten or twelve people, um, and she says, uh, "Dear Ray, um, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm responding to this email now five months later, but uh, hmm. your email just popped up." Okay, <laughs> so I asked, you know, a couple of months ago, I asked Mary. I said, "Mary, do you usually go back and check your emails from five months before?" She says, Ray, I can barely maintain one day's worth of emails, let alone going back five months. I said, well, how do you explain this email just popping up? And she started laughing. And she said, Ray, you know the answer to that. You know? <laughs> so basically, uh, I then responded to that email, and I said, well, this is what happened today. Okay? And I told her you know, what I just told you. And at that point, uh, she said, well, we need to talk. You know, and That was the very first time I ever used Skype. I never used Skype before. Yeah. And so um, then she told me that she had a very dear friend of hers because she used to, uh, she attended uh, um, a conference of the John Mack Institute. Uh, professor John Mack was a professor of psychology at Harvard, uh, mm -hmm. psychiatry. He was a psychiatrist, a medical doctor. And he had uh, research uh, right before his death, I would say for about maybe five or six years beforehand, uh, he had uh, done uh, regressions and interviewed numerous experiencers. And so what happened was that after his death, they had a major conference in, um, I think it was in Rhode Island, and Mary attended, and she came all the way from Australia. And there she met a member of, of the board of directors, uh, this professor from Harvard, who was uh, a retired professor of astrophysics. The next day, this gentleman gives me a call at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, at my cell number. And I, you know, who the hell is this guy? You know, is Ray Hernandez there? Yeah, this is Ray. Uh, who's this? Who's Rudy Shields? So who? Oh, I'm sorry, you know, <laughs> uh, Rudy Shields, a uh, 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 emeritus professor of astrophysics at Harvard. Oh, my God, you know, Mary mentioned about you. And so then for 90 minutes, he started lecturing me, you know, instructing me about quantum physics, how quantum physics can explain all the paranormal phenomena, just like I had in that, um, in that vision, you know. And then that same day, he told me to uh, for, told me to form an organization that I needed to do it. <laughs> wow. Okay, so he was the first one that guided me to that. He's an experiencer himself. Mm -hmm. And then he gave me the telephone number of Dr. Edgar Mitchell, who's the sixth man on the moon, has mm -hmm. a PhD in physics from MIT, and Edgar is the father of modern consciousness studies. I already was thoroughly familiar with his work mm -hmm. uh, because um, I had read all these books on consciousness studies, the science of consciousness studies. And he's a world-class physicist, 
uh, one of the main adherents of the quantum hologram theory of, of physics, which explains consciousness. Um, the next day, I, w I was in Edgar's house. Okay, <laughs> he invited me to his house. <laughs> that that same day that I spoke with Rudy. Okay, uh, the same day that he called me, and that's how free got developed. It was just you know, exponentially took off, and I it wasn't me guiding it. It was like people were coming to me. Um, so. I know that there is a relationship between these ETs uh, in a multi-dimensional reality uh, uh, in terms of what we know as a spirit world. You know, when we die, I know that we are spirit. I know it as a fact. Um, and I know that these ETs have some type of a relationship with the spirit world. Okay? Um, I, I don't know what it is. I have suspicions of what it is because of a lot of the people in our group um, have had very, very deep and profound experiences with ETs in direct communication. Um, and they're, we're talking about the most advanced individuals that have had, had communications with ETs that are members of our, of our group. Um, so, but I know there's that relationship there. We know we live in a multiverse reality. There's not one universe. <laughs> there's a multiverse. Uh, the quantum hologram theory of, of physics uh, explains that. Um, and and um, I guess maybe I ought to stop there because I just could go on and on and on. <laughs> and, I would like. Um, yes. I, I would like to say that your answer is very exciting, and thank you for explaining that. When I was in Germany in two, I lived in Germany for twenty years, and in two thousand six, began to listen to coast to coast AM radio, out of desperation to connect to the English language and and paranormal subjects. And this is when I began to become familiar with all of the names, which are now part of Free. Yes. So when I first read your material, I was very excited about that. And you will find that Yukolo is extremely unique among uh, UFO ET groups, and your Free is also just so amazing, and I'm looking forward to learning more about it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe I, I don't have a lot of time because my wife is sort of like knocking at the, <laughs> the glass yes. window here. Maybe I would like to take the time, if you don't mind, Max, to talk a little bit about free um, because uh, I think the message of free is much, much important in my experiences because um, there are literally you know, hundreds oh, of thousands, yes. millions of people that have had experiences like, like, like uh, maybe not like, like myself, but many of these uh, um, of... Uh, uh, um, of, of uh, communications with ETs and experiences. Uh, let me uh, talk a little bit about FREE. FREE, the Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial Encounters. Again, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the website is experiencer.co, um, has three, basically, three pillars, three goals, objectives. Uh, one is education, and let me talk a little bit about that. We're trying to uh, educate uh, the masses at large that the phenomenon that we're all experiencing is actually uh, a phenomenon that millions of individuals are having all over the world. Um, the vast majority of these individuals do not communicate it with each other because of ridicule. Um, some people might have seen ghosts or spirits. Some people might have heard voices once in a while. Some people have had much, much more profound experiences. Some people uh, 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 get channeling, minimal channeling. Some people get a lot of channeling. Um, so it's, it's a worldwide phenomenon, very, very diverse. So what we're trying to do is um, we're trying to discuss how complex this phenomenon is because uh, a lot of people that deal with the ET phenomenon, uh, they mainly associate it in the United States as with alien abduction. Okay, mm -hmm. when in fact alien abduction from the members of our board, who, uh, as 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 you know, uh, uh, are people that have been doing this work for 30, 40 years. From their experiences, is that it's actually a very small percent of the people that have had ET contact have had quote unquote abduction experiences. Okay. And even then the abduction experience is a much, much more complicated phenomenon that's being portrayed. Um, so um, our focus is, is not on abduction. Our focus is on individuals that have had contact with non-human intelligent beings. That could be ghosts, that could be uh, uh, near-death experiences, okay? 
because a lot of people that have had near-death experience explain that the reality that they were in was more real than our physical 3D reality. Okay, so who are we to judge that that reality was not a true reality? But they did have interactions with non-human intelligent beings. Okay, so our definition is much much more broader of what a quote unquote ET is, and ET is non-human intelligent being from our perspective. Secondly, we are incorporating the paranormal, all the full complexities of the paranormal, and meshing it with the traditional ET UFO type of phenomenon. Because uh, all of our perspective for most of the members in our group says that you cannot separate them. Before it was separated, it was mm -hmm. the UFO people, you know, that are looking for mm -hmm. these little crafts in the skies, you know, taking pictures and with the little Geiger counters, the little meters and stuff like that, you know. And then you had the paranormal people, you know, totally separate, okay. It's all one yes. complex phenomenon, okay. Mm -hmm. Then we're also, in terms of the education, we're trying to educate the masses in terms of the physics and science behind this phenomenon. In our group, our uh, board of directors and consultants, we have five physicists. Let me explain a little bit about who the physicists are. I already told about Dr. Rudy Shields. He's a 74-year-old emeritus professor of astrophysics from Harvard. He's the world-leading expert on black holes. Um, his theory of black holes is that they are God's neurons. Okay. He pointed out 25 years ago that Stephen Hawkins was wrong on black holes. Yeah. Leonard Susskind from Stanford, these are all the world's most fam famous theoretical physicists, that Juan Malsadena from Princeton University was wrong on black holes. Rudy stated that. Then he published three papers about it. Um, Hawkins, last January of 2014, publicly stated that he had been incorrect about mm. his theory of black holes all those 30 years. And guess who was correct? Dr. Shields. <laughs> okay. yeah. When Rudy says that he has a hypothesis that these black holes are actually God's neurons, then you need to pay a little bit of attention to it. Okay. Um, I have on our website a video uh, that Rudy put about that theory and I would recommend that everyone go to that. Mm -hmm. He also has an article that he wrote, he, he called it The Modern Miracles, which is uh, how uh, the parano various paranormal phenomenon that a lot of uh, of us are experiencing can be explained through the quantum hologram theory of, uh, of physics and that consciousness which is an offshoot of uh, the quantum theory of, of physics uh, can explain why we are spirit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dr. Wow. Mitchell wrote uh, several articles that is uh, on our site about consciousness. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, with the implications that we are spirit, okay? So these are heavy, heavy-duty articles um, uh, by these two physicists. We also have several articles by other physicists. We have Dr. Jude Curvin, who um, has a master's in quantum physics from Oxford. Um, she uh, also has a, a PhD in archaeology uh, as well, because she wanted us to study the mystical, traditional side of consciousness. She's a consciousness expert, so she knows the physics and the math and all of the historical, metaphysical, uh, spiritual aspects of, uh, of the topic of consciousness. We also have uh, Ralph Steiner, who basically was a child math and physics prodigy at the age of eight. Wow. But yet at the same time, <laughs> yes, at the same time, when he was a young teenager, he started uh, uh, doing, you know, mystical meditation. So both of his sides are fully developed. Um, we also have uh, another uh, individual who is similar to Ralph, uh, uh, a child of math prodigy, you know, uh, at the age of eight, uh, and physics prodigy. And yet uh, the other side of the brain, the spiritual side of the brain, was fully developed. Uh, this other particular individual. Okay. Yeah, it was my wife. <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> This other individual uh, basically for two years hibernated, meditating 18 hours a day in his room. Wow. So this is, you know, a genius among geniuses that did mm -hmm. this. So that's mm -hmm. another member of our physics group. There, everyone's an experiencer. I won't go into the details. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're, uh, the education is combining the physics, 
the consciousness studies, the science of the consciousness studies, the metaphysical, the mystical component of consciousness studies, but the focus is on science, okay? Mm -hmm. Then all of the paranormal aspects of it and the ET uh, contact phenomenon that is very, very diverse. It's not, you know, UFO or this or that. It's all integrated. So that's the education component, and that's pretty much on our website. We also have a support component. Uh, by support is that there are a lot of individuals that are, are traumatized because some of the experiences have not been pleasant. Some of the people are just traumatized uh, because uh, now all of a sudden they're getting voices coming into their head or they're seeing things, you know. Uh, 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 malicious things m might not have happened to them, but just the, the trauma of having these experiences uh, taking mm -hmm. place. So we have a, a forum, an experiencer forum, which is not a chat room, it's actually a forum where you can, you know, discuss at length numerous issues. So mm -hmm. I encourage everyone to go to our, our experiencer forum mm -hmm. and to sign up and begin interacting with one another and to start learning uh, about uh, the complexities of these phenomena. Mm -hmm. We also have something called an experiencer buddy, which is basically sometimes you just want someone to talk to. Um, mm -hmm. So the experiencer buddy is a, is a way of, of, of getting someone to chat with you. Uh, we also have various articles on support. Um, you know, when you're trauma or traumatized and... Um, you're having fear or whatever it is, we have articles that discuss that. And then the other part is a research project. Um, the research project came about because um, uh, initially when I had my experiences, I did a lit uh, an academic literature review of what we know about the experiencer phenomenon. And what I found out was that there was almost nothing published on this topic. We all know almost nothing about mm -hmm. the impact that it has on us mm -hmm. as individuals. Um, and so, um, so that was when I approached Dr. John Klima. Don't tell me why. <laughs> okay, I was just yeah. guided to him, and I told him, John, I've got an idea of a massive research project, which is the first ever long-term, comprehensive academic research study on the experiencer phenomenon. I have uh, ten other individuals who have been working with experiencers for each of them for at least thirty years, waiting to back uh, us up on this project. Uh, they would be sort of like the, the hands and feet on the ground, you know, of uh, the knowledge of this experience. But we need the academic because this has to be an academic study. And at that point, he's like, oh, my God, Ray, I was born for this, you know. <laughs> I was born for this, you know. I'll, uh, no need to accept. I'm already accepted, you know. I, I was guided to this, you know. And then he tells me about his story, how he's been a lifetime experiencer, um, how he's a channeler, you know, how... Uh, uh, he communicates with uh, these ETs and et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and so th this research project is now underway. We have an initial questionnaire that's on our website. It's a quantitative questionnaire, yes or no. It'll take you 15 minutes to do. And then it has a box for you to be able to check off whether you, whether you want to participate in more extensive interviews. And for those extensive interviews, I'm also looking for people to interviewers, to become interviewers. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe uh, 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 if Max can send out my email to others, uh, you can send me your emails and, and we could chat. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, of course, of course. So this is uh, a major, major undertaking. Uh, it's never been done before, um, and 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 that's the research project. Um, so again, in summary, we have a research project that has never been done before to study the experiencer phenomenon uh, academically. Uh, we have the educational components, and I talked about uh, the diversity uh, of, 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 of educational topics that we're focusing on, and our website is the primary vehicle for that. And we have the support uh, aspects of it. Now, in the future, where we want to go is we're, we're going to be having a free radio show. Uh, which is going to be broadcast uh, for two hours. I will, uh, if you send me your email, I will put you on an email mailing list. Mm -hmm. I will be announcing that. And again, it's sort of, it's going to be mirroring our website. It's going to be talking with experiencers, talking with scientists, you know, physicists, uh, consciousness studies experts, and talking about with paranormal people. Um, and then how do we mix it up into a big gumbo soup? <laughs> so that's going to be the, the radio show, but it is going to be grounded in science, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to uh, eventually launch some type of TV component of it where we have these educational seminars because we have all these folks on our group uh, with diversity of experiences. And, for example, just on the topic of, for example, of support, okay, we have five PhD uh, uh, psychologists who are all experiencers, Okay, 
mm -hmm. and have worked with experiencers in the past, so we could do a series of seminars on yeah. the topic of support. Um, awesome. And on awesome. and on and on. You know, awesome. Uh, uh, awesome. Yeah. So, I have uh, a question. Free, free is basically an umbrella, and that's why I can't. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just no. want to finish. Point. And I'm that's where, okay. what I'm doing is I'm contacting and other members of our group are contacting other organizations that are working in the domain of uh, experiencer work mm -hmm. um, and some people are focusing on particular areas um, uh, diverse areas and so we're letting them know that our organization is sort of an umbrella uh, while everyone has their own separate institution uh, our philosophy is that we need to communicate with each other we need to interact with each other we need to exchange information we need to be you know uh, collaborative uh, so we don't work separately uh, because in, in, in what I've come across in this year and a half of doing this type of work is that so many folks have no idea what other folks are doing you know right. yeah. and so that's why I reached out uh, to Max and several members of the group uh, yeah. to, to let you guys know what we're doing at free and to see how we can collaborate and work together that's what the human colony has all it started as something that we should be open to other channelers and bring up as more, much people as we can. Mm -hmm. to so now up. I'm basically open so, for so questions, maybe like that. 15 minutes, uh, and then my mm -hmm. wife is hounding me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Brother Ray, the sharing of the near death experiences and just your experiences was so cleansing today. Um, I've been crying and laughing and I feel so strongly connected with you and your sharing of the near-death experience is amazing because I've experienced death many, many, many times and I feel that speaking with you, you would be able to pull these experiences out because um, I'm open to sharing them. I just need assistance in pulling them out. Mm -hmm. I've been a lifetime experiencer myself. Um, and these memories are I'm allowing myself, commanding myself to remember and I really feel there's a strong connection between yourself and I and our similar to straight up exact experiences from your shares to shares of others that just completely resonated with me to my core and I am so excited to be able to speak with you and work with you Thank and this you. morning was, was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm, I'm open to interacting with anyone here. Now, remember, it's not experiencer.com, C-O-M. It's not C-O-M. It's C-O. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, it's C-O. Hey, okay. can, can you give me five minutes, please? Oh, very much. Yes, any other questions? My wife has sort of given me the final ultimatum here. I apologize. I actually had uh, one idea to uh, uh, possibly uh, throw your way. And that would be, have you thought about uh, essentially having uh, channelers with these uh, very amazing spiritually enlightened uh, physicists to have like a, you know, a dichotomy to actually start to expand from different points of view, you know, our human uh, side of physics and the way all these really amazing people are doing it and then the extraterrestrial side to maybe start opening up a lot more of the stuff. Well, the... Out of these physicists, uh, five have open, uh, no, uh, four of them have open contact with these ETs um, in one way or another. Uh, oh, okay. Some much more advanced than others. Brother uh, Ray, would, yes, you, would you have people that, with, uh, with, well, yes, you already said, with, with open contact, I feel when I get close to certain people in physical proximity, the strength of these connections becomes very strong. And I have a very strong connection with commanding these experiences, if you will. If I'm able, I'm, I'm just a student altogether of life, so I'm not able to work. I have seizures. There's been other things that the government pretty much is labeling me unable to work, however, not supporting me. So right now, anything that the universe can do to, you know, progress this would be amazing. And I really feel that and there's some amazing things that uh, what you have to offer and what we have to offer. And let, let me, let me make there. a suggestion. Um, pretty much almost every day I'm on the phone for at least two hours with different types of experiences. 
and and many of the other people in in um at the level of Mary Rodwell and Barbara Lamb, whatever, it's it's the same. There are literally you know hundreds of thousands just in the U.S. people similar to ourselves. Um, and it's very difficult for me to have extensive communications with all the people that are um, calling me and contacting me. Um, what I would recommend, uh, I would definitely be glad to interact with with each of you that that email me and, and even maybe uh, have a uh, you know brief conversation with each of you. But I highly encourage everyone to go to the website um, and and participate with the Experiencer Board. Uh, you know, share your experiences to learn. Uh, if you have articles about your experiences, to write articles uh, about your experiences that we can put on the website. Uh, but at, at this point, it's it's um. It's it's a sharing of of of, uh, of experiences. Um, There's so many people speaking the language now. Yeah. It's like, there's more people speaking the language than there is experience, and there's not so many sites that bring up. And we started this summer having groups where we speak the language together, and we learn a new galactic language and speaking mm -hmm. groups. And let me tell you that similar to this organization, I've encountered many, many, many throughout the U.S. Um, uh, uh, experience of groups are being formed all over the place. Uh, it's just exponentially. All of a sudden, the last you know two to three years is just my goodness. It's just an explosion of of uh, of small groups uh, all over the, the 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 U.S. are being formed, and in other countries as well. But uh, the one I'm most familiar with are in the U.S. So it, we're all being guided. We're all being pushed uh, to awakening. And that's the title of Mary Rodwell's book is Awakening. And if you go to the website, um, you can read her first chapter, which is very, very lengthy, and it's excellent. Um, and um, um, so anyway, um, I encourage everyone to go there. Uh, uh, maybe I could take one more question, but then i got to leave fairly quickly, and I apologize for it. Yeah. Um, you're lagging out. Actually, you're, you're breaking up a little bit. No, he, he's now he's left, so he's going to go offline if he doesn't come back. Bruce, go for it. You're muted still. Hello. You're oh, muted. Yes. Still. Yes. Thank you, Ray. I have okay. a question for you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Bear, for telling me that. I read in your material that. You have your um, free is coming up with innovative, innovative um, ways in which to monitor or to monitor experiences like this. Innovative scientific experimental ways, and I was curious what those were. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining like putting, um, you know, <laughs> on people's no, heads no. and measuring the, the brain. Do you, but do you have a way to measure the brain activity during? Well, yes, that if 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 people can type in the Institute for Noetic Studies. Uh -huh. Institute okay. for Noetic Studies and type in the name Dean Radin, R A D I N. Okay, Dr. Edgar Mitchell actually started that organization many, many years ago in the early 70s. Is that correct? And, uh, R A no -no 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 uh, Institute for Noetic Sciences. Okay. Are you, uh, oh, sciences. Okay. Yeah. Sciences. Uh, yeah, Institute Sorry. for Noetic Sciences. And uh, the the director now is Dean for many years is Dean D E A N Radin R A D I N, and they've done numerous of these types of scientific studies where they uh, even brain waves. Uh, I imagine MRIs, they did yes yes MRIs awesome. of the brain that yeah. that was all done actually since, since the 60s a lot of these things were done at numerous universities. Oh uh, okay. Yeah. What what one of the things that we're working on uh, internally is um, uh, is on some. Uh, some uh, physics uh, research. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if and I'm if I'm interviewed, if I'm getting if I'm interviewed, right, and yes. I share my experiences, how would that be evaluated or um, approached from a okay? Physicist? Basically, you would take the initial uh, questionnaire that's on the website. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and that questionnaire it would take you 15 minutes, yes or no, maybe 20 mm -hmm. minutes. And then you would write like a 500-word summary of your experiences, and then you would click uh, a box that yes, I want to follow through. Okay. Okay. We're in, mm -hmm. we're in the process now of, the, of developing these secondary questionnaires. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been working on this for nine months because we want to make sure that it's done properly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure, of course. Yeah. Sometime about January 1st, individuals are going to be contacted by an interviewer, mm -hmm. uh, and then basically they'll be working with you over several weeks, uh, possibly several months. 
mm -hmm. just to discuss all of your experiences and how you've been transformed uh, in detail. And they'll, they'll be writing that uh, both in a quantitative uh, format uh, and in a qualitative you know, um, you know, a, a format. Um, Do they need to be huge experiences, Ray? Can they be subtle? Do they need to be huge, like your well, experience? Some, in, some individuals, as you know, uh, mm -hmm. have every week a uh, huge experience. <laughs> some individuals yeah. have one or two subtle experiences. Uh, okay. But no, it can be very subtle, very minor. Okay, thank hey. you. Hey Ray, I was gonna make. Yes. I was actually just gonna make one last comment. It's not a question. Um, yeah. I was wanting you to look into a, uh, an individual called Todd Murphy. His book is called Sacred Pathways, and they worked on something that you're talking about exactly called the God Helmet. The God Helmet used electromagnetic pulses and certain uh, you know frequencies and patterns to essentially recreate in the human experience the God experience, the UFO experience. I just wanted to throw that your way. Well, there's been a lot of institutes out there that have worked with um, different types of apparatuses to measure brain waves, to measure uh, consciousness, out-of-body experiences. Uh, there's the Monroe Institute. Um, there's a, a Princeton Peer Group, P-E-E-R, I believe it is, uh, out of Princeton University. Uh, at Stanford, there's the Stanford Research Institute. This helmet um, actually uh, induces that, by the way. It doesn't measure it. It induces it. Okay, it, it makes yeah, it happen. I think I might have read that. Um, uh, one of our members of our group uh, was thoroughly, is th uh, uh, thoroughly familiar with the different types of um, apparatuses uh, to um, to induce, uh, um, how should I say, you know, out of uh, out of body consciousness type of, of travel. Uh, there have been many, 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 many studies in this area uh, done by many academics and, and non-academic institutes in this area. It's quite diverse. Awesome. Thank you, man. Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, I um, need to go. <laughs> oh, yes. Ray, can, may one other member who just joined ask you a quick question, please, please? Yeah, I'll, I'll be very brief because I'm being okay. uh, from the outside. Oh, I know. I'm, uh, thank you. Thank you, wife, on our behalf, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Rowie, did you?